Hello everyone and welcome to this adventure in Photoshop. Uh, we're going to do several things with this image. It's a, it's a nice image in several ways and uh, I, I like you know the overall idea of this image but we're going to certainly need to rotate it a little bit, crop it, uh, and fix up some things. But I want to bring uh, these shadow areas uh, back out that this image has. Over here, fairly uh, dark area, and up here, same thing. Just, you know, kind of losing detail, losing some detail through here. Then I want to turn around and bring some color into these areas as well. And I want to also bring the lightness up on this church. I think it uh, looks a little dim sitting in the woods obviously it would but I think we can make it look natural and and bring the light up and just create a more interesting image I want to actually end up with something similar to this so let's just get started with this uh, first thing let's go ahead and crop this uh, the way we want it to be so I'm just gonna click on the crop tool and uh, just going to click in there and I'm going to rotate it, move my uh, cursor outside the image and then I can rotate it however I want. And even though it seems like you'd want to line that up with the uh, bottom foundation of the, the church, but if you do that, uh, you're going to see that it really cants the image off in a whole different way so we're gonna undo that now let's do a control or a command zero there I'm gonna change this to unconstrained and try this again so I'm gonna just move this a little bit not too much and I can maybe move this over here a little bit more I'm not so crazy about keeping uh, the area behind the church so much as I am the church itself. So I'm going to go ahead and double click. Uh, church looks a lot better. We have a little area back here behind that has a wire. Not really that fond of that. So I'm doing a control space bar and clicking so I can magnify this area. And I'm going to turn on the uh, clone stamp tool because pretty much any of these other tools to clean this up are just going to make more of a mess so you can try using the uh, patch tool and the spot healing tool and everything if you wish I think you're going to be very frustrated if you do so I'm going to hold down my alt key and I usually like to do this on its own layer so let's just create a, a blank layer and then we have a lot more control over it. I'm going to click once there and I'm going to just you know just sample from somewhere and click once right here and then go over here hold down the shift key and click again and it fills it in a straight line that looks a little awkward so I'll add a little bit more same thing here actually I'm gonna go ahead and just fill that tree in with the clone stamp tool and get that little bit of wire and let's do the same thing here and remember make sure a line is off because that can really um, mess you up so let's go ahead and get around this side and let's go up here we'll clone some tree in right here and we'll get this part right here so cloning often is usually very helpful, you know, resampling, I guess is what I should say. Click the Alt key, Option key on a Mac, sample, heal, come back, sample from another place, do a little more healing uh, until you get, and, and now if you look back over here, you're going to have a very hard time figuring out where that wire was. So let's do a Control E to bring this layer down. I, I'm satisfied with what I've got. I'm going to do a control zero or command zero on a Mac to fill my screen with the image. Okay, 
let's start off by making a copy of the original layer. So I'm going to just do a control J to make an exact copy of the background layer. So now I'm going to do an adjustment layer on this copy and I'm just going to go up to brightness, contrast, and I'm going to run the brightness up quite a bit. So I want to open up those shadow areas that I already talked about. If you look up here at the top, this really lightens that area up nicely. Yes, this is too light now. We're not going to worry about that. We want to open up the shadows right now. So just click that. And I'm just going to go ahead and drop this down. Merge it with layer 1 by holding down control key, command key on a Mac, press the letter E as an echo, and now we've got this much lighter layer. So let's do that again. Let's go down to the background layer, control J. So we have a copy of it. I'm going to go ahead and move this up, get it out of the way, so to speak. I want to, on this layer, I want to darken everything. So I'm going to go up, click the adjustment layer again, and this time I'm going to take it down. I'm going to take it down quite a bit and click the X. And once again, we're going to uh, bring this down and merge it with the background copy layer, control E to do that. So now we have a lighter and darker version. You can very easily see that. Uh, <clears throat> let's just for now turn the darken off click on layer one actually I'm gonna move that back up over uh, the background layer just click and drag your layers wherever you want them to be so I'm gonna right now go to uh, the layer mask right down here the square donut I like to call it and we put that mask right here. This is essential. Be sure and create this layer mask. So then we're going to go to image and down to apply image. Now this is the lighter image copy so this one's done a little bit differently. Everything remains by default the same but we make sure this says invert. If it doesn't it's not going to work. So click on invert for the lighter version and then click OK. Now, if I go over to the layer mask and hold down my Alt key, <clears throat> you see this creates a negative, basically, uh, of the image. So that's what we've got going on there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off for a second and go down here and do the same thing on this one. I'm going to click on the layer mask, and with the layer mask on, I'm going to go to image, apply image, and this time I'm going to turn invert off and click OK. And actually I want the darker layer to be on top. So let's click and, and just drag that up, let go once it becomes, once you see that thick, thicker line there, means that you can move it there. So I'm, I'm going to move my darker one to the very top. Now you see what we've got. What I'm going to do now is go to the blend mode right here it says overlay. Notice it's normally on uh, normal and let's make sure I didn't change anything there. So if you go to multiply you can see that uh, you've made some difference. Let me just change that back to normal want your screen. I want to actually experiment with going to overlay. Now overlay is letting some of the other show through as you can see and this really is the layer that's lighting up the shadows. Okay so we've got these three things going on right now. Everything is looking much better. We've opened up this dark area here opened up the dark area here and we have some more layering of light uh, throughout. So if I turn both of these off again you can see what a dramatic difference this has made. And we're going to go even further. Let's go down to the new layer icon and click that once 
new blank layer. So we're going to go up here and I actually want to turn my eyedropper on. You can press the letter I and I want to find a nice color up here in the trees that I want to accentuate a little bit. So I can kind of search through here and you know I, I do like that. So let's just go now to color range. So we go to select color range and you can see uh, the area that we selected is showing up here we can actually go from uh, color or yeah from color range out into the image and further uh, find a color I, I do like that particular area so I'm gonna go ahead and just click OK and notice that turns that those particular colors into a selection so now I'm going to go to curves. I'm going to go up here uh, on my adjustments panel and click on the one for curves. And I, I just want notice now we lost the selection, so to speak. But if you look in the layer mask, the selection is here in a mask. So I can go up here now and change just the colors that I want. Let's look at red real quick, or green, sorry. And if I pump the green up, you immediately see what's going on. I'm going to just bring it up a little bit. Then I'm going to go into blue and actually try pulling the blues down. You see what happens. A yellow uh, is moving in a little bit, and that's not all bad. So let's go now to red and see if we can't pump just a little red in. You see the absence of red and adding a little red into the image. Okay, so let's turn that eyeball off so you can see the way it looked. Just kind of subtle coming in there. Now let's let's say we want to uh, work on uh, some other color in the image than what we did. Let's, let's go back to uh, this layer, layer 2, and let's go to select and color range and uh, let's say we want to affect these leaves that particular color and you can drag that slider up to get even more of that same color so you see now we've got the lighter uh, leaves selected so again we're going to go up to the curves adjustment layer and let's move this over to the side a little bit and again let's go to green and see how we affect that let's let's just drag that down a little bit and let's look at blue down a little bit on it and let's look at red let's put a little more red in it and we'll just get away from that. So let's look at what we've got in these top two layers. We've changed it a little bit. Now if there's any place that that we've gone too far, that's not really going to be a, an issue either. Like in the doorway here, we see this is reddish colored and under the eave, a little bit maybe too much on the roof of the church. So that really came about right here so if we click up here on this layer and we make sure we've got our brush on now you might say that uh, got too much red in and if you look in the doorway obviously our shadow there is red so let's actually um, adjust that so to speak and look at up here under the eaves as well. So that's the great thing about these masks. We can click back in and this obviously is the layer that created that. So if we click right on that mask and paint with black, make sure black is the foreground color when painting on the mask to reveal. We just paint across there. now that's on a hundred percent so we whack that really quickly so you may want to you know cut that back to 
around 50%. And then we just go through here and do the same thing. I like some of that on the roof, but some of that doesn't work as well in other places. So we'll get some of that out of the grass and bring some of that green back that's down here. And look around. Maybe get rid of that over there. And remember, it's on around 50%. So the more we paint, the more the green's going to come back that's underneath. I'm going to do a control zero, command zero on a Mac. And we can do the same thing up in the leaves. If we don't want all of that reddishness, uh, we can, you know, basically paint that back. We can do it a lot more subtly by reducing this the opacity. Uh, and we can also go ahead and create another layer that's got some other color in it. So click back on layer two and let's just uh, go back to color range. So select color range and we will look in terms of these leaves over here. Here. Now let's go up here. Let's sample that. We don't need the fuzziness slider up quite so much. Click OK. <clears throat> and again, we go up to curves. And we can just change it all at once by doing that. And notice we're bringing the light in because that's all three, uh, the color channels at the same time. So you can get some interesting effects doing that. No doubt about that. So let's just put that back where it was and then go in to the individual channels and that's boosting the reds. Let's just be real careful about how far we go and then pull down maybe on the blues. Watch as it, as it goes. You can take it as far as you wish. Let's see what we do with the green. So we don't want to flatten. See how some of the colors are getting uh, flattened out. You gotta kind of be careful of that. Let's get that out of the way. So now we've got another uh, curves adjustment layer here, and let's turn the eyeball off. Not a lot of difference, but just subtle differences. Now, probably the next thing that that kind of bothers me is the church itself. Uh, let's click on that because it's kind of well, it's dark. It's shady. So let's go into select color range and let's click right on the church. <clears throat> let's take the fuzziness down a bit. And then we can click on the plus and let's see what we've got here. If we turn that into an adjustment layer, let's just do a brightness contrast and let's see what we get here. All right. Now, if we've gone too far, uh, obviously we've affected the leaves a little bit. We didn't do a great job in the color range, uh, but we can paint with black. Let's just get at it a little bit harder. We can get some of that stuff if we brought too much back up. It's the beauty of those masks. So if we look at where we started, turn off all those eyeballs, here's where we are now. We've got a lot more color in the image. This church can certainly go higher, lower, whatever we want to do. We can bump the contrast on it too. We just don't want to get carried away. Move that back out of there. Again, uh, if we've tweaked the colors too much, we just go back to these individual layers where we worked on the color and paint with black right on top of those. And you can really diminish that in a hurry so it, you can tweak it and make it look just exactly the way you want everything to look. And I probably would do one more layers adjustment and work on the grass. Let's just, I'm going to do an eyedropper down here and 
look for that color maybe. Let's go to select color range. Let's do it again here. Let's I'm gonna hold down my alt key, option key on a Mac to reset that. And let's just click the church real quick and then come down here and click the grass. Fuzziness, let's bring the fuzziness back down and make sure we're sampling some grass down here that we really want. Let's click OK. And now let's go to curves and let's go look at the green. And let's go to red and pull it down a bit. Wow, that's really strikingly green, isn't it? Let's see what happens with the blue. Pull the blue down a little bit. So we've got the green, uh, shamrock green now. Remember, click on that layer mask with black paintbrush. Let's take the opacity down and let's paint that other back in. Make it look a little more natural. There's some up here too. We turn that off and on you see. Kind of like how green that tree is right now though. Let's tone some of this down up here. So you can see you can control so many great things. We've, we've got these uh, that we experimented here and made a gigantic difference overall. So, you know, you can also change these sliders up here to control how much the, the mass themselves do. You come back down here on all of them just to, just to see the difference. And let's turn them all off except for the original background layer. So maybe a little heavy handed in there. Maybe let's, let's just bring that down a little. But look at the difference even still yet it made. over. That's the original and there's the adjustments. So work with this. Have some fun. Experiment. Uh, I think it can make a difference in some of your pictures. Uh, especially if you've got a lot of areas in there that are dark and you want to bring the detail back. Talk to you all later. Bye-bye.